little did I know, I guess, growing up in Adelaide as a you know young Aboriginal girl going to school and facing a lot of racism there. I never thought that I'd you know come this far. Hello, I'm Carla Grant, and I'm the host and executive producer of Living Black on NITV and SBS. So I grew up um, as a young girl in Adelaide, always wanting to be a journalist. I had a strong sense of social justice uh, very early on, growing up, seeing a lot of injustices uh, suffered by you know my family, many family members, and um, other First Nations people in our community. I moved from Adelaide to Canberra. Uh, to study in Canberra. I went to Canberra CAE as it was at the time, but it's now Canberra University. I couldn't get into journalism straight away, so I worked in the public service for about six years. And then I sort of finally got my big break at a production company. They were looking for a presenter um, for a video magazine program that they were making for ATSIC, uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Commission. And then I eventually went to work for that production company full time as a producer director so I traveled all around the country doing stories of achievement um, traveling to Aboriginal communities so it was a real eye-opening experience and then in 1995 I joined SBS and I've been there ever since I joined to work on a, another program called ICAM the Indigenous Cultural Affairs magazine program and that was a weekly Indigenous current affairs program and that went um, until 2001 and then then SBS management wanted me to sort of come up with something a bit different so we gave ICAM a rest and then I spent a year sort of coming up with different concepts and and I came up with the concept for Living Black and in 2002 and then in 2003 we went on air with the program so um, you know this year we're celebrating 20 years on air which is you know a huge achievement for any program to have survived that long um, you know in this industry and on our screens so I'm really proud of that achievement. Little did I know I guess growing up in Adelaide as a you know young Aboriginal girl going to school and facing a lot of racism there I never thought that I'd you know come this far it was you know it was just one of those sort of you know pipe dreams you know something that you dream about as a little girl growing up and and so I never thought that I'd, I'd get this far and yeah and I'm yeah certainly very proud of you know you know, coming this far and, and all of my achievements. And I think my family would be proud too, especially my grandfather, because he, um, you know, I get a bit teary when I speak about him. He um, was a huge inspiration to me and he always said to me that education was the main thing that you had to, get a good education he would say because he'd put H's in front of everything so it was education and apples and oranges and so he really said to me and instilled in me the fact that I needed to get that good education if I was going to get anywhere in life so yeah I think he'd be looking down on me now and, and be you know, quite proud. Growing up I didn't really see many you know women on TV that I could aspire to um, and especially First Nations women there were no First Nations women on television well, as journalists. We did have um, Arnie Justine Saunders, um, who was an incredible actress. Um, you know, she was she was on our TV screens, and you know, we had people like Uncle Bob Mazur as well, and and then Ernie Dingo sort of started coming up through the ranks as well. So there were a few people around. There was just this sprinkling of First Nations people who you could see on our TV screens, but I certainly didn't see any one who I could aspire to as a journalist so there were people like um, you know Yarn Event and Liz Hayes and, and Tracy Grimshaw and those people were sort of the people that I you know saw on TV and people who I aspired to. I think you know these days it's, it's changed incredibly uh, there's a lot more you know First Nations women on our screens and that's really good to see. The work that we do at SBS and NITV is vitally important because you know we're putting uh, First Nations voices front and centre and, and, and amplifying their voices and providing a, a platform for them to you know speak about the issues that matter to them and, and creating you know that space for them so that we can share all, our diversity of, of voices and, and perspectives because we are you know, all different we don't all agree on everything we all have different perspectives and, and views on, on you know a wide range of issues so 
So it's really important to create that space um, for our First Nations people to be able to, you know, have that voice and platform that they don't otherwise have, um, you know, on commercial TV and, you know, mainstream television. And I think we, it's a really special place because we have that um, ability. I think, I guess we have this superpower that we have, we have incredible access to, um, you know, to First Nations communities and, and to people in our communities, leaders and elders and a wide range of people. And, and that's uh, something that a lot of networks don't have. So, you know, it's pretty important work that we, well, that we do there. I think for me, uh, as a journalist, I'm obviously, I, I don't give my own views. I'm, I'm just the person who asks the questions and I, I provide that you know, platform for people to be able to share their their own stories. So, I think yeah, living black is certainly um, is is a voice for First Nations people to, you know, to share their stories, to talk about the issues that matter to them, and you know, and that's what we do. We we ensure that these issues are front and centre, and and First Nations people are front and centre of discussions and debates and important conversations that this nation needs to have. There's been huge changes over the last 20 years uh, in television since certainly since I started thankfully you know our um, representation on screen has grown and we've got a lot more indigenous journalists on television and a lot a lot of people behind the scenes as well as producers and, and directors and camera operators and editors so we're sort of infiltrating right across the board in different roles and you know in newsrooms right across the country as well which is really great because, um, you know, in the past the reportage of Indigenous issues hasn't been so great. It, you know, there have been a lot of, um, I guess, you know, when I was growing up the only time I would see an Indigenous story on the news was, it was always a negative story. So now that's, you know, starting to change quite a bit and, you know, we're seeing a, a, a lot more diversity of the stories and better coverage of Indigenous issues. So, um, yeah, so it has changed a lot thankfully over the last 20 years and, and I guess um, I've been a part of that growth of um, you know um, paving the way and also um, nurturing young journalists who are coming up through the ranks as well so it's really pr pleasing to see and I'm, I'm glad that I've been able to be a part of that growth. I mean 20 years of living black We've just covered so many important stories, you know, deaths in custody, uh, child removals, um, you know, the whole gamut, domestic violence. Um, yeah, we've covered every, every sort of issue that uh, First Nations people face, we've covered. So Living Black has played a huge role in, in um, highlighting those issues and bringing them to the fore and putting them on a national uh, platform so that, you know, we need to hold governments and organisations to account. So I think, you know, um, I'm pretty proud of the fact that we've been able to, you know, do that for 20 years and there's still a lot more to cover, a lot more issues to cover, a lot of stories to tell and we'll keep on doing that for as long as we can.